Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have a GMC Acadia to show you, and this one's ultra blue. So if you guys follow me here on the channel, then you know I am in a new environment I've never actually filmed over here before, and that means I have access to some new brands for you guys. Now clearly today we're going to be taking a look at a GMC Acadia. This one is the Denali trim, which is the most expensive trim you can get on the Acadia. Now for 2023, the Acadia remains mostly unchanged from the 2022s. However, there were some new color choices added, including this ultra blue metallic, which is definitely an interesting color and actually reminds me of the intense blue from some of the Hyundai vehicles. But as far as all the color choices removed from the lineup for the Acadia for the 2023 mod year, those are satin steel metallic, midnight blue metallic, and cayenne red tint coat. And those were replaced by the volcanic red tint coat, the ultra blue metallic, which we have here today, as well as the sterling gray metallic. And as far as some of the other changes for the GMC Acadia for this model year, they added the front and rear black emblems with the GMC lettering and the bright center caps with red GMC logo as a dealer installed accessory. And that is it as far as the changes go. Uh, so basically, if you're looking at a 2022 model year, you have some new colors for 23 and a couple other small things as well. And lastly, to finish up on pricing before we actually take a look at what the Acadia Denali has to offer, the 2022 Acadia Denali all-wheel drive started at $49,450, including destination. And for 2023, it did get a price bump. I'm not exactly sure the exact number because GMC's builder tool on the website actually does some incorrect math. I'm not exactly sure how that's done. Uh, but for 2023, the Acadia Denali all-wheel drive starts at $50,495. So depending on where you look, it's either a $1,045 price increase all the way up to about $2,000 price increase. Again, I'm not exactly sure on that, but I think the most important thing to note is that the Acadia Denali now starts just over $50,000 again, including all-wheel drive and destination. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time and take a look at what the 2023 Acadia Denali has to offer. So once again, the Acadia Denali in front of us is fishing the new ultra blue metallic exterior color, and this one has the light galvanized leather interior. So it is an interesting color combination for sure. But looking at this color, it definitely has a good amount of metallic flake in the paint. And once the sun comes out, you can definitely see it brightens up the color quite a bit. Now the Denali features quite a bit of exterior chrome trim, both on the wheels as well as the grill and some of the other body panels as well. So up front of the Denali, you get the large chrome front grill the red GMC logo, and this one has the front camera for the technology package for the 360 surround vision system. LED reflector headlights with LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. You have some more chrome trim lower on the front bumper with your front parking sensors as well as LED projector fog lights in the corners. It's a very nice premium front end. And this generation Acadia has been out for a few years now, so it's not like this is brand new to the market, but it is still a very attractive looking SUV. And along with the Denali package, you do get the body color exterior lower trim. And again, I think that gives it a more premium look in my opinion. Coming to the wheels and tires, these are the standard Denali wheels. They are 20 inch in size and wrapped in 235-55 Michelin Primacy Tour all season tires. So a nice high quality all season for sure. The mirrors are going to be body color with your LED turn signal indicators, camera on the lower side again for that 360 camera system. The driver's side as well as the interior one are going to be auto dimming and they do have blind spot detection. Proximity entry on all four door handles and here from the side you can see all the exterior chrome accents again as part of the Denali package including the chrome roof rails up top. Out back of course we'll find more chrome along with your LED tail lights. I believe these are full LED units with LED reverse lights as well. Large chrome strip running across the tailgate with red GMC lettering. Backup camera, looks like it has a little washer as well. Dual outlet exhaust with rear parking sensors and the little Denali script lower on in the bumper. This one is all wheel drive, so you do get an all wheel drive badge. And yeah, the exterior looks very nice. Again, this color does shift quite a bit with the sunlight. You can see it is coming in and out of the clouds there. From this side, when the clouds are in, it's definitely a little bit darker, but once you get into the sunlight on this side of the vehicle, it definitely brightens up. And I do actually like it. It has a little bit more metallic than something like the intense blue from Hyundai that I mentioned earlier. But looking at the window sticker very quickly on this particular vehicle, this one has the technology package for $1,795. That includes quite a bit of equipment and I would probably opt for that if I were to buy a Denali myself. 
This one has the three-year OnStar and connected services package, which is $1,500. That includes unlimited data for the 4G LTE built-in Wi-Fi and a bunch of other stuff as well. This one has the dual sky safe sunroof for $1,400. The ultra blue metallic is $495. The floor liner package, which is a nice package and the liners are very high quality, is $425, which brings the overall MSRP to $56,110, again, including destination and all wheel drive. Now it is worth noting on the GMC Acadia Denali, that the 3.6 liter V6 is optional. I believe it's about a $500 option over the two liter turbocharged engine. And this one does have the V6. But stepping inside, once again, this has the light galvanized leather interior, which gives you a two-tone look. The door panels are gonna be mostly soft touch. So you have a nice soft touch leather stitched upper with the light gray traditional armrest area. Looks like some wood accent trim power windows, mirrors, and locks. The mirrors are power folding. Nice premium feature. Two-person memory seat for the driver's side. Power tailgate with programmable height in the Bose premium audio system. Good amount of storage in the door there. Coming to the driver's seat, you do have a power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar. You can see what the seats look like there. They are a very light tan or beige color. You do have the Denali script kind of stitched into the headrest there. And the leather that itself is pretty nice. It is very soft, actually. It's a very high quality material. This is a somewhat darker upper with a very light gray lower. And again, I like that the steering wheel matches the upper because it's darker, it wouldn't show as much dirt or anything like that. Go ahead and start it up. So immediately we're agreed to the partially digital, partially analog gauge cluster. This is the same one found in something like the Chevy Traverse or the Chevy Blazer. I believe it is a seven inch screen in the center which features your speedometer as well as some of the other configurable options as well. They can control on the right side of the steering wheel. So, so scrolling through really quick, you have your trip settings, average MPG, fuel range, oil life, TPMS, some of your other filter, life cycles and everything like that. And one thing I do like is you do get a little off-road page which tells you the angles at which the vehicle is sitting as well as your current four-wheel drive setting. So that is pretty cool. I do like this cluster. It's fairly high resolution, like I said. Leather wrap steering wheel that is heated. You have your adaptive cruise control as part of that technology package once again. And on the right, you have some of your voice commands and again, the controls for that gauge cluster. Automatic headlights with auto high beam assist as well as your LED fog lights here on the right side, on the left side. On the right, you have your regular wiper stock. I don't believe these are actually rain sensing. To the left of the steering wheel, electronic parking brake, gauge illumination, and your heads up display controls. So you can see it there in the camera. You can move it up and down on the left of the steering wheel. Display some different information. Right now it has the RPM or tachometer on it as well as the digital speed readout. Again, a nice premium feature for sure. And moving across the dash, you can see this is entirely soft touch. And the color is very interesting. It's kind of got a bluish gray hue to it, but it is nice to have it soft touch. Definitely a premium material. Coming over to the infotainment system, this is the eight inch HD color touchscreen with built-in navigation. Wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, AM, FM, Wi-Fi hotspot. Of course, it does have the 360 camera system, so you can view all those camera angles right there. Again, I've talked about this on other GM products, including some of the Chevy videos I've done. I do like it, it's very easy to use, very easy to learn if you're new to technology or anything like that. Uh, but again, it is looking a little bit dated just in terms of the physical screen size itself at eight inches. Do like all the hard touch buttons below. Dual zone automatic climate control in the front. And here is where you'll find your push button gear selection in the Acadias and some of the other GMC products as well. Now, actually, I'm not a necessarily a fan of this location. Um, I'd much rather have it up here like some of the other uh, GM products or just a traditional shifter in the sense that it's you know located down here on the center console. This is not ideal in my opinion, uh, but that is where they decided to put it. Wireless charging pad that is fairly large right here. USB-A and USB-C inputs, 12 volt outlet, SD card reader for the built-in maps. Stop start off, traction control off, hazard button, as well as your parking sensors off. Here's the key fob for this vehicle. Traditional GM key fob, it's kind of the truck one that they've been using, or I guess the truck and SUV one they've been using for several years. 
remote start built in, uh, tailgate power release right there. Pretty high quality feel to it. More of that wood accent trim, heated and ventilated front seats, lane keeping assist. Here's your four wheel drive or all wheel drive settings. You can see we're in two wheel drive right now. You have four wheel drive, your sport mode, as well as your off-road mode. So those are the modes found in this vehicle. Nice leather center armrest here. Inside it is fairly deep, but you can see no ports or charging in there. Little pad right here for some coins or something that you wanna store right there. And down below the center console, this is again what I'm a fan of in some of the Hyundai vehicles like the Santa Fe. You have additional storage space below the center console here. And again, that is a benefit of removing the shifter assembly right here. This one's not as large as the Santa Fe, but it is nice to have nonetheless, and I think it's a nice added benefit. Up top, you have your light gray headliner, little microphone over here. Digital rear view mirror with your adjustments as far as the uh, camera system go right here. You can have it as a traditional auto dimming like that by flipping that back. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the digital camera mirrors. But again, to each their own, and I think the refresh rate and the colors are very good. OnStar LED interior lighting, three garage home links, sunglasses holder, and power sunroof controls. This one does have the optional sunroof, which is two panels. The front one acts as a traditional sunroof, which opens and pops and everything like that. And the back one is just a fixed piece of glass. But yeah, that is the front of the GMC Acadia Denali. As you can see, it's reminding you on the steering wheel right there. Go ahead and take a look at the back seat and see what the second row has to offer. As you can see, the door panel is gonna feature mostly of the same materials. So soft touch upper, nicely stitched padded armrest right there. Good amount of storage space. Little bottle holder up here. This is a six passenger configuration vehicle. So you can see your seat recline adjustments via this leather lever right there. Bucket seats with armrests for each passenger. Step and height is very easy. Definitely I think what a lot of people prefer these days. Coming to the back, you have your third zone automatic climate control, heated second row seats, a 120 volt outlet, two USB charge ports, and one thing that I find very neat and useful down here is a little extra drawer with cup holders. And I think this storage space is actually very nice. It's, it's out of sight, out of mind. And again, you don't have to show that if you don't want. You can only use the cup holders like that. Uh, it's pretty neat. Not something you see in every SUV. Two mat pockets on the backs of the seats. Vents are located in the ceiling along with LED lighting and your second row glass shade. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the third row seats. I believe they actually are folded down right now. But the seats do have the kind of one touch slide function for easier access to the third row. So there's a look at the third row seats. I'm not gonna hop in there, but I think there is a good amount of leg room. It's obviously not as much as something like the Tahoe or the Yukon, uh, but I think it is usable in most scenarios, especially if you're not gonna use it all the time. Uh, if you have the seats folded down like that one is, I think that adds to the cargo capacity. But in the back, you do have USB-A charging ports, one cup holder, not really any armrest space. Again, I think that lends to the smaller size of the vehicle. So I guess there's not a USB charging on that side, but there's just one on the driver's side. Still have third row vents and lighting though, which is a nice touch. So moving around to the cargo capacity of the Acadia Denali. Power lift gate, once again, of course. And when the seats are folded up like this, you'll have that amount of space behind it. I think that's about a foot and a half to two feet. You have your levers to fold down the third row right here on the left side. Storage cubby, 12 volt outlet. Good amount of storage beneath this little tray here. Kind of slopes down, you can see goes to about eight inches deep at its peak. There's a look at the actual storage space if you fold one of these second row seats down. You can see that is very long. Again, very useful if you need to haul large items. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up here on the passenger front seat. Power passenger front seat with two-way lumbar. 
So nice amount of adjustability for the passengers. Damped glove box, no lighting that I can see. There's a better look at that console cubby. But yeah, that is the inside of the Acadia Denali. Let's go ahead and pop the hood, take a look under there really quick, and then finish out this video. So under the hood of this particular Acadia Denali, you'll find the 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine paired to a nine speed torque converted automatic. This engine puts out 310 horsepower, 271 pound feet of torque, again, through only the front wheels or all four wheels if you option all wheel drive. This is a very stout powertrain, one that's used in many GM products, such as the Traverse, the Blazer, some of the other SUVs and uh, vehicles as well. It's very stout. I think a lot of people do like it. And since they've been using it for many years, it's been very refined. So I think this is a very reliable powertrain overall. Now, but like I said earlier in this video, this is not the only powertrain available. You can opt for a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that puts out 228 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque, again, through either the front wheels or all four wheels. Uh, this is the optional upgraded powertrain or engine, if you will. Uh, but I think that two liter turbo is definitely no slouch and would move this vehicle around without much issue. So that's gonna wrap up this video on this 2023 GMC Acadia Denali. If you guys have any questions or comments on this vehicle or the Acadia in general, make sure to drop them down in the comment section. I'll definitely get back to you. If you guys enjoyed it or found it helpful, please hit that like button. It greatly helps out these videos and the channel. If you guys are not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications so you guys are notified here every time I post a new video. So as far as my thoughts and opinions on this particular vehicle go this one has quite a bit of equipment it's just over fifty six thousand dollars like i mentioned earlier this one has a lot of the equipment available on the denali however there is an ultimate package which this one does not have and does include some additional equipment i'm not exactly sure off the top of my head what that is uh, but i think for fifty six thousand dollars including the v6 you know the all-wheel drive and everything this is a very competitive vehicle it is again looking a little bit dated i'm not going to lie just in terms of the gm um, interiors with the infotainment systems and stuff. I think they're slowly starting to roll out their new um, interiors on some of the new vehicles and the refresh vehicles, including the Silverado and the uh, Sierra, the Yukons, and of course the upcoming you know, Hummer EVs and stuff like that. And given this Acadia is quite a few years old in this current generation, I'm sure we're only two to three years out from an all new generation Acadia, which will definitely be more competitive and I'm sure a little bit more expensive to start as well as prices continue to go up year over year. So if you need something a little bit smaller than a Chevy Traverse, but maybe something a little bit larger and more versatile than a Chevy Blazer, this might be a perfect vehicle for you. And like I said, the price points kind of fit in there as well. You know, this is a little bit more expensive than the top of the line Blazer, but then again, it gives you that third row seating with an extra two passenger seats. So like I said, I think this is a very nice vehicle. It might just be looking on the dated side as of right now. But if you currently own this generation Acadia or are looking at purchasing one, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you do own one, let me know your ownership experience with it. I think that will help a lot of people out, especially if they're in the market for one. I think these vehicles, like I said, are overall very reliable, uh, but you never know. Actual owner experiences is better than me speculating. So if you happen to own this vehicle, make sure to leave a comment. Let me know how your ownership experience has been. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Once again, hopefully you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. And as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.